Welcome to our second installment updated tour video. We are in forward berthing on the main deck. This compartment in our last video was under construction. And to remind you what this thing looked like, uh, this compartment was totally destroyed. Here's a photo of this overhead here, right where we're standing. You could see uh, volunteers up on the main deck. There was a large hole cut in here where the civilian owners had installed a large skylight and a hot tub here below, which leaked over the winters that they were living on the ship, which rotted the deck. This is the deck we're standing on now. You could see all these frames were rebuilt. And uh, we're pretty proud of this compartment. This is back to how it looked originally when built with the original canvas style racks. This is what was used. They call this the World War II style. This is what was used on these ships until they went through the Fram when they were installed the coffin style racks, which are still being used in the Navy today. Our volunteer, Charlie, who I mentioned in the earlier, um, in the first segment, fabricated these frames and he did such a phenomenal job recreating them that they actually fold up like the originals, what they call tricing up after the sailors would get up in the morning they would take their gear, put it away, and then fold the bed up so no one was left laying in a bed and the floor could be swabbed and everyone would go to work. Um, fo immediately forward of forward berthing, we have the anchor windlass gear room, which has just been painted. A lot of work done in here. There was a lot of damage, uh, civilian damage that was done in here. And I mentioned in the first video we have the anchor windlass gear, which will be installed in here through this temporary patch in the deck, and then the anchor windlass and capstan itself, which will be mounted overhead of this, uh, up on the forecastle on the bow. This is the bosun locker. Now, those of you that served on these class of ships would remember that this was not open. This was a watertight bulkhead. The civilians opened this up when they made this a master bedroom at one time. But for ease of entry into this compartment, we decided to leave that open. Otherwise, the bosun had to come through a little 24-inch locker here overhead. Um, and below was another level. The bosun locker went down another level before this, uh, below this. We have a lot of gear that we're going to display in here. Lines, blocks, tackles, that sort of thing. And below us here is where the anchor chain, the hawse pipes would come through here. And the anchor chain would be stored in an anchor chain locker below our feet. We're gonna walk through forward berthing again and through the men's head, enlisted men's head, I should say. And as we do, I wanna point out a couple things. Here's some Dan buoys on the deck here that are being made. Those are um, styrofoam that's covered with paper mache, and then we fiberglass over those. Those are in construction, um, and when they're completed, they're gonna be mounted to the sides of the stack, add a little color to the outside appearance of the ship. We have those scattered all over the ship. There's uh, 12 of those in different states of readiness. One last thing I didn't point out is you'll see when Wes is filming here, there's red pipe all over the ship. This is our future fire sprinkler system that was graciously donated to us and fabricated. We painted it, cleaned it up and painted it and put all the parts in the proper compartment and we're awaiting installation of that hopefully soon since this is a wooden ship. Uh, more of these were lost to fire than to any other cause. So we feel that's pretty important to get that up and working as soon as possible. We're going to pass through now the port side of forward berthing into the enlisted man's head. Original style lockers. Everything an enlisted man needed or had on board had to fit inside this locker. All his personal gear, his uniform, his one change of civilian clothes. We should point out here, this is the moon pool. This is where the, after the Fram, when they had a detachable sonar, that they would lower it from the reel up on the forecastle down through the bottom of the ship. Here we're entering the men's head. The compartment uh, dividers are being installed, fabricated now. And this room was a real mess when we started. 
This is this compartment when we started. Nothing but bare wood and peeling paint. This is substantially now as the room looked when this ship was originally commissioned in the 1950s. Keep in mind, all this gear had been removed from the Lucid. Every piece you see came off another ship, either from uh, the Susun Bay Reserve Fleet or up in Bremerton, Washington. Some of the stuff we purchased online has come from all over the country. This is the only shower for enlisted men. It was a double shower, two at a time. Uh, this, this was it for the enlisted men, which typically averaged around 65 sailors. The original location for the laundry, um, one washer and one dryer for 70 men. So you didn't get it. You didn't get it very frequently. Maybe, maybe once a week you're able to wash one load. chain of command board that was typically uh, installed on military bases and larger ships. Uh, this was as the chain of command was in 1970 when the ship was taken out of commission from the President of the United States, Richard Nixon, through Admiral Zumwalt, Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral McCain, uh, Commander of the Pacific Fleet, all the way down to the skipper of the ship in 1970. Lieutenant Commander Ron Wilgenbush. And that brings us back into obviously, this is, this is uh, where the sailors would eat, referred to as mess decks. Um, rather small compartment, half the enlisted men would eat in here at a time. Uh, we also use it for a shop right now. Some of the things we have going on, we just made these decals and installed them on aluminum. These are the ship logo decals that will go on the stack when it is uh, painted here. It'll be completed in the next couple weeks. Then these will go on the stack. And here's a photo of the Lucid in service that we use. We use photographs and original plans to try to get the ship to look as much as it did like when it was in naval service. You can see that decal here on the, on the stack. Um, this is... This was taken before the ship went through the Fram. The additional compartments were not on here. You could see the stack is still exposed to the weather, these lower levels. This was probably taken in the late 60s sometime, either departing or returning from one of its many tours um, off the coast of Vietnam. And of course, this is the goal. Uh, so many of you have seen this photo online. This is a Photoshop of the restored Lucid on the downtown Stockton waterfront. This is what we're shooting for. Okay, here we are in the galley. Obviously the sailor's favorite place to visit on board to lose it. Um, this has been substantially completed. Keep in mind that there was nothing in this compartment when we acquired the ship. All this gear came off other ships and a lot of it is functional already. The steam table we use, we cook lunch on here for our volunteers. Simple things like chili and hot dogs and things like that. The stove and the steam kettles uh, are not functional yet. The, the stove will be shortly. We'll be able to use that uh, to prepare hot meals here. The hood is functional. We have to have that recreated. We cannot find an original one of the proper size to fit and to meet fire codes. Uh, so we had a new one manufactured. Uh, two steam kettles, as was original on board this ship. And all these stainless steel countertops uh, came off other ships. We found the right sizes to fit in here. And this will be totally functional. We'll be able to serve meals here uh, fun on our fundraisers, possibly pancake breakfast and those, that sort of thing. Um, so this is, uh, this is a very important part of our operation because we, we like to feed our Saturday volunteers and that keeps the attendance uh, pretty, pretty regular. We have a regular group of uh, volunteers that come to our work parties the second and fourth Saturdays. Here we are in the wardroom, uh, substantially completed um, as it looked at one time in the, in the Lucid's history. Uh, the wardroom 
like the captain's cabin, upgraded a little bit by the sailors once the ship was in commission with paneling and awards and things like that. Um, we use it now on our work parties. We let uh, we have six or eight people have lunch in here, and this is the a recreation of the original silver uh, service locker or buffet, I guess you would call it, and uh, all the communications gear that has been installed as per original. And a nice, re a nice award we received from the USS Champion, the successor class of ships to these MSOs, the MCM number four. Um, the crew actually came aboard and spent a weekend working on the ship and the skipper donated this plaque to us. So we're kind of proud of that. We're gonna proceed back through the starboard passageway into our workshop. We haven't showed that before. It's an actual uh, working workshop, so it's a little, a little messy, but Bear with us here. Originally, this was what was referred to here as boiler flats. There was a diesel driven boiler in here that generated heat for the uh, heat exchangers throughout the ship, heat for the steam table, for the galley, for the steam kettles, and uh, a distilling plant called a badger, which was used to take seawater, uh, boil it, take the condensation and make fresh water out of it. So this was boiler flats and it has been opened up through a watertight compartment here when the civilians had it into the real room. This is where the large mag tail was stored. There was a 16 foot diameter reel in here, which held a very large mag tail reel in here that had had been removed and scrapped well before we got the ship. So we're using these two combined compartments as our workshop, tool storage, uh, supplies, and we'll probably continue to use this as our workshop as this project, even when we're complete, there's gonna be a lot of maintenance and upgrades and things that'll be going on. So we're gonna walk aft out the real house, which is our workshop, onto the fantail, which where we always have a number of projects going on and we have one of our volunteers here today priming priming some parts. This is Don Reinhardt. He's the chairman of the board of our board of directors uh, here. Hush, hush job. Diligently working. Yeah, supplying uh, epoxy primer. What are you doing here, Don? Well, we just got this base for the uh, ensign staff on a, the flag for the American flag on the back of the ship. And we acid etched it, and now we're putting a couple coats of epoxy primer on it. And it looks like the, the gnats enjoy, enjoy the, the, yeah, the white yeah. last night. So That's we just okay. Have to go over. Okay, sandpaper will take care yeah. of those. Okay, keep working, Don. Well, we keep talking. Okay, let's walk back here a little bit and show you the, the uh, flag staff. That that John, uh, or we, we actually modified. This is an original flag staff off another ship that we were able to acquire. It has quite a bit of the original fancy work on it that the sailors installed on it. And uh, Don just primed it. This will get painted and uh, this will hold the anchor light and uh, will be installed here in the next few days on the fantail. So we start looking more and more like a ship every day. So this will complete our second installment. Uh, thanks again for watching. If, uh, if you've been a supporter, we wanna thank you for that. And if not, we certainly could use your support. Yeah, donations. Is, is what keeps us working here. Um, none of this work could be possible without the donations and then the volunteers, obviously, to use that no money. Employee. No one's paid. We're, uh, we're all volunteers here, and we get a big bang for the buck. Every dollar you donate, we get $5 worth of work out of it. So thank you again, and watch for the next installment being posted soon. Bye now.